By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a reprint duel. And what does that mean? That means that we've made decks from revised Chronicles and 4th edition. So those are all the sets that we looked into. All the cards that we're playing with have been reprinted in those sets. I think my opponent is actually playing a deck that is completely 4th edition and Chronicles. He's not even using any revised cards. So there are no dual, dual lands in his deck. For example, I am using those. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just too tempting not to use them. I do think it's, it's really fun to build decks with revised Chronicles and 4th edition because, you know, the cards are a little bit more accessible. They're a little bit more cheaper. Um, I started playing in that time of magic and I've got tons of those cards. And I think many of you also started playing in the revised 4th edition Chronicle era. And you can actually make a surprisingly big amount of interesting decks just looking at the cards in those sets. So yeah, I'm challenging you guys to kind of do the same and see what you can come up with. It is really interesting. Now, today I am playing with a blue and red deck. It's Elementals. It's called the Elementals Vault. I'm playing with like 10 Elementals. It is pretty cool. It's an homage to that creature type. And I'm playing against a blue and black deck. Uh, and my opponent, he wants to play out a lot of bigger creatures. So I've simply called it Fatties. I believe he's playing with four Mahamoti Jin or something. It's insane. And like saying you're vampires and air elementals. So there's just going to be a lot of big creatures coming my way. I believe he's also playing with a lot of counter magic. But more about that in the deck section part of this video. And before I go there, I would like to tell you that if you want to skip that, as always, the easiest way to do this is by looking at the timestamps that are listed in the description below. Simply click on the timestamp MTG Games and that will take you straight to the action. As for now, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Blue and Black Fatties. And here we see the deck of my opponent. Well, actually part of the deck of my opponent. I don't have a deck photo, unfortunately, but I can tell you his strategy. It's pretty straightforward, but interesting. He wants to counter everything away until he can play his big fat creatures like Mahamoti Jin and Sengir Vampire and then copy those big fat creatures with clones. I think that's basically what he wants to do. The cool thing is that he's playing with Remove Soul. It's a uh, counter spell that you don't see that often. It's one blue and one. So it's pretty good when you're playing multiple colors but you can only counter creature spells with it. So it is a tad bit limited. Besides that, he's also playing with power sinks and counter spells to kind of keep control over the match. Like I said, until he can play out his bigger creatures like the Mahamoti Jin and the Sengir and copy those with clones. On top of that, he's also playing with Sorcerer's Queen. I think he's got like two of those in his deck, two black and one to cast. You can tap the queen to turn target creature into an O2 creature until end of turn. Now this is really nice in combination, of course, with those big bad flyers especially with Sengir Vampire, because Sengir Vampire, remember, gets a plus one plus one counter every time it gobbles up a creature of the opponent. So that is pretty sweet. And he's also playing, I need to mention that, with Time Elemental. And I'm playing with the Elementals deck here. And shame on me, I'm not playing with Time Elemental. So I really need to get my flavor on. I need to put some Time Elementals in my Time Elemental deck. It is, of course, a pretty useful creature as long as you've got control. When you're behind on board, Time Elemental is usually just too slow and it's just not gonna help you immediately. But when you've got control and you've got enough mana, Time Elemental is an absolute killer. One blue and two to cast for this creature, and its ability is really cool. Two blue and two and tap, and then you can return any permanent back to its owner's hand. So you can imagine, if you've got control of the game, you've got this bad boy out, you, it's gonna be super hard for your opponent to kind of play around the Time Elemental. Um, talking about control, he's also playing with JM Day Tomes. Of course, the idea of this is, when he's got counter magic open, he's got counter magic up, he can simply, at the end step of his opponent, use his Jam Day Tome to draw some extra cards and then kind of get ahead in, in, uh, in card advantage as well and try to find those bigger creatures and cast them as soon as he can. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty basic deck, you could say, but it is really cool and I'm, I'm really looking forward to kind of play against it. I think Felwerstone is really nice uh, color fixing because, of course, you don't have access to your Moxon, you don't have access to the dual lands because he's only playing with 4th edition and Chronicles cards. And in that case, of course, uh, Felwerstone together with City of Brass are great ways to kind of get the mana that you are looking for. Okay, this is the deck of my opponent. Now let's take a look at my deck, Elementals Vault. And here we see my deck, Elementals Vault. And it's basically called Elementals Vault because the idea of the deck is in the middle, you've got the, the vault, you know, where all the elementals are in. And of course the mana, the mana store to kind of get the elementals out. 
And then if you want to open up the volt, what you got to do is you've got to turn the manifolds that are around the volt, you got to turn them sideways to release the mana in combination with the dual lens that you see in the vault. And then you're freeing the elementals. That's kind of the story of the deck. So, and, and it's also kind of what I'm trying to do. So turn one, I'm hoping to cast a mana vault. Then turn two, hopefully I've got two blue and two red. I've got the mana that I need. I'm going to tap that. I'm going to tap the vault and then I'm going to release one of the elementals. So an earth elemental, air elemental, water elemental, um, or of course uh, an air elemental. So all these elementals are in here, like all the blue and red elementals from the alpha core set are represented in this deck. Now, what else do I want to do? Well, basically kind of do what blue and red are good at, which is countering stuff which is burning stuff. So I've got four counter spells for lightning bolt. I'm also playing with two blood moons, which I think in this matchup, the blood moon is not going to be super useful, but blood moon can be so powerful when you're playing against like the more like powered up decks that usually play like four color, good stuff, five color, good stuff. You know, when you're playing against those decks, blood moon can like really be devastating for them because they usually have kind of a weaker mana base. So the blood moon turns all the non-basic lands into mountains. So they don't have the mana they need. And then it can use the bolts to kind of kill, for example, a mana bird and kind of, you know, get control there. And I've also have an answer to artifacts in this deck because I'm playing two energy flux main. So energy flux is an enchantment that says... During your upkeep, you've got to pay two for an artifact or else the artifact gets destroyed. Now, there's some nice synergy here between Energy Flux and Manifold because once I've used the Manifold, once I've tapped it, I don't want to untap it again. The problem is that you do take a damage every turn that your Manifold stays tapped. But when I've got an Energy Flux out in my upkeep, they're going to ask, do you want to pay the two for the Manifold? I can simply say no. That means I'm going to put my Mana Vault into the graveyard. I'm going to lose it and I don't have to take the damage. So that's kind of a little bit of synergy there. So um, yeah, this is the deck. I'm, I'm really enjoy playing it because I get to just to cast a lot of big fat elementals, which I love. Uh, my opponent has got even bigger creatures. So I'm curious how this matchup is, is going to go. I do have some control magics, but I think my opponent has two. And we don't really have an answer to enchantments. So... That's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe this game is going to be decided with kind of like control magic power struggle. Could be. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. We looked at the deck of my opponent. His name is Yoop, by the way. We've looked at my deck. Now let's go to the match. Game number one. Here we go. We have Yoop, my opponent, on the play, starting with an island and passing the turn. Let's see if I can find a mana vault here, turn one. Oh, just an island and a pass. And okay, there's the second island into a Felwer Stone. And there's a second island for me as well. This could kind of end up in a stare down because we're both playing with a lot of counter spells. So maybe I could counter magic open. Exactly. He's not playing anything out, just a basic swamp. And that's it. I'm playing an island and pass. Okay, we're going to have like a stare down here. I probably have one counter spell in hand or something, and he must have had a ton. And exactly, we're just building up our land base. This is kind of silly. I think my opponent here is doing the same. Okay, so not a lot of magic happening. This is what can happen, of course, when you've got two people with counter magic in their decks. I'm just trying to find the right moment. Or, or shall I just break the silence and play something out? I mean, it's going to be pretty boring if we're only going to drop lands and that's it. I've got six lands now. Come on. I should play something out. The worst thing that can happen is that it gets countered away. Okay, I'm not doing it. Passing the turn again. Another swamp here for my opponent. So he's got eight mana. I've got six. So yeah, I mean, I don't have any red sources, by the way. I am playing... Uh, okay, okay, so I'm playing my first kind of card here. My energy flux. So that's going to impact... Yoop's board a little bit because he has got that Felwer Stone. Ooh, there we see a Power Sync. And this is the power of Power Sync because what, what Power Sync is going to do right now is going to force me to tap all my mana, which means I cannot counter anything when it's Yoop's turn. So even if I would counter this Power Sync, I don't even have mana open to counter again. So I'm basically giving my opponent here a free turn. So here you can really see the power of power sync over like any other counter spell. If you would have had a normal counter spell, I would have simply countered the counter spell or probably I would have said, you know what, I'm going to put the energy flux away. I'm going to keep my three islands open to counter something that you're casting like this Gem Day Tome, which is super good right now in this match because it means he's going to get some card advantage. 
And remember, I'm playing red and I'm playing blue and my only weapon uh, against artifacts in my deck is actually Energy Flux. And I just lost the Energy Flux because he countered it away. So this was a perfect scenario uh, for Yoop. And right now I'm playing my Water Elemental. I'm expecting a counter spell here. Maybe a Remove Soul. Yep, there's the Remove Soul. Okay, counter spell protecting my Water Elemental. Oh, Power Sing though. And just to clarify, like, I don't know that he's playing with that many counter spells. I know he's playing with some counter magic, but by now, of course, I have this idea of, oh no, he's playing with a lot of counter spells. So in, in, my, in my mind, I kind of had enough to play the Water Elemental with the counter spell backup. And look at this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this is going horribly wrong for me. And it all started with that bad decision to play out the Energy Flux. That's how this whole thing started. And it kind of snowballed into me now facing two Sangir Vampires. Do I have a Control Magic can kind of save me here? I need a Control Magic or at least a Flyer. Okay, this is something. I've got a 4-4 four, four Air Elemental. I guess I can trade like a 4-4 for four, four, a 4-4, four, four, but then still he's got one left and he's got a Jam Day Tome. So he's asking for my, uh, my cards in hand. I still have quite a lot of cards. But he, he's got more probably because he's got the Tome to draw extra cards with. What is this card? Is that... Could it be a Sorcerer's Queen? Counterspell on the card we cannot see. Yeah, it's a Sorcerer's Queen. And there's a Counterspell on it. So it's, it's pretty cool to see him like play with the Sorcerer's Queen. Just attacking... With the one clone, maybe I would have attacked with both, to be honest. But it, it could be that he's a bit modest because I'm, of course, a player that also has access to red. So he's like, well, maybe if he's going to then fireball me later when I'm close enough to like 10 or something. And look at this just passing turn. Maybe my hand's full with like earth elementals and fire elementals and stuff that, stuff that requires double red. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Yeah, of course, he's going to draw another card. Oh, man. This game won so bad. I'm going to drop to 12. I mean, brilliantly played by my opponent. I have to give him that. Like, he took full advantage of that power sink play on my energy flux. That was fantastic. Look at that just passing the turn. I mean, six cards in hand. I must have, like, a lot of double red in there. Has to be. Maybe some counter magic as well, but... Probably like a lot of Earth Elementals in that hand. Anyway, another attack here. I'm going to drop to eight. Okay, finding something. Tapping, of course, five for this Air Elemental. I wonder if my opponent has Counter Magic here. Yeah, of course he does. Power Sync. Can I counter the Power Sync? Remember, I'm only playing with four Counter Spells. So, you know, there's, I've already played one counter spell or two even. So there, there's a pretty big chance that I don't have another counter spell. So he's countering my air elemental all the way. And he has full control. This is the game that he wants to play. Have the book out, have counter magic in hand, and then preferably some creatures. He's got all of those components. And yeah, like I said, I need, I need a control magic with counter magic as a backup. Ooh, there's the time elemental. That is so sweet. Oh man, the time elemental is really nice. I love it. You know what? I don't mind losing because the time elemental made an appearance. And he's going to clone the time elemental. That is, that is hysterical. That is super funny. That is so cool. And then of course, next turn, now he's attacking with both. Playing a little bit more aggressive. So because I'm on eight, of course, I have to block. That's why he's attacking with both. That's a good move. Going to drop to four. There's nothing I can do, I think. I mean, even if I have burn, I can play a burn spell for six. It's not going to do anything. Yeah, okay. So there's a lightning bolt killing one of the elementals and now showing my hand here to my opponent. Look at that fork. Two earth elementals, two fire elementals and an earthquake. Now remember that earthquake also was useless until, of course, my opponent started playing those uh, time elementals. Because, you know, Earthquake doesn't deal damage to creatures with flying. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What an interesting game, right? Very, like, slow start. And then that first play that Energy Flux snowballed me into losing this match. Very, very interesting. Uh, we're now going to, I think, just shuffle up. We're not even going to sideboard. And we'll, uh, we'll start with game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So at least I'm on the play here. 
Starting with the Mana Vault, okay, this is what I want to do. Now remember, I know now that he's playing with a lot of counter spells, a lot of counter magic, so maybe I can play out an early elemental play under his counter magic. Okay, Earth Elemental, Fire Elemental, Earth Elemental. Okay, this is actually better than a Fire Elemental because it's bigger, although it has less power, so maybe a 5-4 because he's not playing with any Psionic Blasts anyway, so I guess Fire. Anyway, it's good to have this 4-5 big boy and now he's in trouble, you know, because now he's got to respond. So I'm taking a damage because my mana vault still tapped. Playing an island here, gonna attack for four. Gonna put him on 16. Now, of course, he is playing with a lot of clones, so we're not out of the woods yet, you know. If he can find a black, for example, play Sorcerer's Queen, then next turn play clone. Ooh, okay, there's Felwer Stone. Okay, there's that ramping. I thought maybe there was gonna be something else. So next turn, I mean, next turn he's got five mana. He's also playing with Mono Multi Jin, of course, which is huge. I mean, it does cost six, but if he can ramp up a little bit more. Attacking again for four. So, you know, my Earth Elemental already has dealt eight points of damage, and hopefully I've got like a counter spell in hand to counter away whatever bigger creature he's playing right now, or if he wants to play Control Magic, for example, I could counter it away. So this is going to be an important turn. Tapping to another Felwerstone. Okay, that's fine. You go and Felwerstone. With the Felwerstone, of course, he can make any kind of mana because of my City of Brass, but he's missing a land drop here as well, which is not great for him because he wants to get this 6 ASAP, so now he's going to go to 8. Wow. Is my Earth Elemental just going to win the game for me? That's it. Is it that simple? That is the dream, of course, for my deck, right? I mean, turn 2, turn 1 Volt, turn 2 Elemental, and then kind of win the game. There's a clone, so it looks like I'm going to counter this clone. Yeah, there's a counterspell. Are we going to see a counterspell on the counterspell? No, we're not. This is kind of a moment where my opponent needed that little bit of the right cards in hand to counter this counterspell, because in that case, we would have had a four or five each of us, and we would be in a standstill. But now he's going to drop to four, so this is really bad news for him. Only four measly points. And I mean, a good game for me, but not that interesting. Okay, now we're going to see a clone. So he's going to clone my Earth Elemental. It looks like I don't have an answer to this. So, I mean, he's, he's clinging on. He's still alive. He's got four life points. We both have an Earth Elemental. Finding an island. Do I have a Flyer, for example? Like, I could play an Air Elemental. Of course, having the risk that my opponent has, like Power Sync. But I think I should take the risk by now. Ooh, am I going to attack? Does that mean that I have a Lightning Bolt in hand? Maybe bolting it away after blocking. So I'm going to attack. Of course he's going to block. That's the only thing he can do. So four points of damage on the Earth Elemental. I wonder what I'm going to do. I mean, I must have a plan, right? Okay, changing my mind, apparently. <laughs> which, is, which is weird, because I clearly attacked. Again, of course, we're playing kind of casual, but I'm always a bit annoyed with myself. I think if, if I make a decision, I got to stick to it. But maybe I, I explained verbally, I'm just going to tap this and not attack yet. I don't know. Anyway, I took it back. Am I going to play Control Magic instead? Ooh, I'm going to tap five. Am I going to play like an Earthquake? A Brain Geyser? Okay. That is interesting. Maybe I forgot it's got like five toughness or something. I, the way I attacked, I assumed that I maybe had a bolt in hand and play a bolt after. But anyway, it, it is done. And now, of course, I cannot counter. So giving a bit of an opening here to my opponent. So he's playing a Sengir Vampire. That is interesting. Now, of course, I just drew like three cards off the Brain Geyser. So I'm sure I found maybe a Flyer as well. I mean, I, Burn can also get me there, but I'm hoping to win, of course, with my Earth Elemental. Okay, Control Magic now on his Earth Elemental, because when I attack, he has to block with the Sengir. Exactly, so I'm going to steal the Earth Elemental. You can <laughs> see my opponent is not happy. He's like slamming it. Okay, get my Earth Elemental. And then I'm attacking. He has to block or else he dies. Going to take another point. What am I going to play for one? Another Mana Vault. Okay. Fair enough. So I'm actually on 12 because of all the damage I took from my own Mana Vault and my own City of Brass. 
But this is going to be tough for my opponent because I've got... I mean, what he needs basically is control magic to control magic the clone. Okay, there's a Timmy. That's style points. There's another Tim. Okay, so he can chum block with both Tims. He, and then he can stay alive. Okay, no, no. He's saying that's it. Okay. He could have he could have survived one more turn. Oh, I had an earthquake. Okay, so I could have earthquaked the Tims away. That would have been a nice move. Like, I, I feel like even, even, even when you're in a hopeless situation, it's always nice to kind of, you know, play that turn and see where it goes. Anyway, um, yeah, here you can see the strength of a Mana Volt in a turn two elemental, right? If your opponent doesn't draw any answers. Anyway, this was game number two. It's 1-1, one, one, and that means we're going to go to game number three. Exciting! Game number three. It's 1-1. One, one. I'm really excited about this. Even if I lose, I get to show you the idea of the deck, right? Turn one, uh, Mana Volt. Turn two. Big elemental. <laughs> it's anyway. Uh, my opponent starting it with a basic island, which is, I mean, starting for him is really good for his counter uh, strategy, of course, because now he's got enough mana open. I mean, double blue would have been better for him, but he can power sink. He can um, do play to remove soul, so it's 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 pretty good. I'm playing a, a volcanic island and a pass, and there he's finding another blue and a pass. So we're both just kind of you know building our land base, not doing much. Ooh, I'm doing something. Playing a Mana Vault. Now the question is, is, is my opponent going to counter this? No, he's not. He's like, you know what? Use your Mana Vault, play something big, whatever, and I'll just Power Sync it. And then I, then I take damage from my own Vault. So I, I do get that strategy. I think we're both kind of building up on lands. And, and we saw this, of course, in game number one as well. And tapping one again, I'm going to play another Vault. Oh, I'm going to play a Soul Ring. Now this is interesting because, because of the Soul Ring and the Mana Vault, it means that it's going to be harder and harder for my opponent to kind of get a working uh, Power Sink out, right? Because I've got so much mana to kind of back it up. And now he's got five lands open and passes to turn. He doesn't want to play out any of his big, like, five drops, like a Sangir. You know, he just doesn't want to do it because he's afraid of counter magic, I guess. Tapping five here and keeping four mana open, which is quite important because he can power sync me for four. So I'm counting the mana, playing an earth elemental here. So I wonder if we're going to see, okay, we're going to see a remove soul. Am I going to counter the remove soul? That would be a little bit ballsy of me. Yeah, I'm playing a counter spell. Are we now going to see a power sync by my opponent? Oh, I'm lucky here. I am lucky because if he would have played a power sync, I would have... Taking the damage from my own City of Brass, my Earth Elemental would have been gone, and I would have taken the damage from the Vault or spent four mana to untap it next turn, basically giving my opponent a turn away for free. And again, that, that Earth Elemental, and it did so much work in game two. There's a clone, though, on the Earth Elemental. Again, great timing by my opponent because, I mean, I only have one untapped. No, I've got a Soul Ring and a City of Brass, but remember, I'm only playing with counter spells. Those are my only counter magic. So I cannot counter in response. So great timing here by my opponent, who's got now a also a 4-5 elemental, untapping my mana vault here and drawing a card for turn. There's another duel, another volcanic island. What can I do? It looks like I am going to do something. Tapping five, another elemental. I'm going to take the risk here. There's a water elemental. So water elemental is five power, four toughness. That means that if this sticks, I can attack next turn with both and at least deal some damage. And it does stick. Wow. Now, Yoop does have six mana. Are we going to see a Mahamoti sometime in this game? Oh, another clone. That is so cool. And I think I think he's cloning the, the earth elemental. I'm not quite sure, though. I'm not quite sure. I think Earth Elemental is probably the best because if you block Earth Elemental and Water Elemental, it kills each other. And with Earth Elemental, you can also block my Earth Elemental. And it's harder to get rid of. What would you do in this scenario? Would you clone the Earth Elemental or the Water Elemental? Anyway, I'm attacking with my Water Elemental. I just want to get some of the Elementals out of the uh, off of the board, I guess. Untapping the Mana Vault, by the way. So there's the uh, the block. Remember, I'm playing with tons of Elementals, so I don't really mind doing this one for one trade. Maybe I even have more in hand. No, I don't. I'm passing the turn. There's an island. So he's got a lot of mana right now. Remember, he's playing with Mahamoti Jins in the deck. We haven't seen any. I mean, if he can start playing out those bad boys, I am toast because that six toughness, it's super hard. Unless, of course, I can find like Control Magic or, or I can counter them away or have some, you know, a lightning bolt and do a two for one. But that would still be kind of bad. 
So let's not just, don't play out your Maamotis. Oh, you know what, Duke, because I love the creature. I'll find a solution. Just play out a Maamoti. Just too cool. Anyway, I'm just passing the turn here. My opponent here drawing into a swamp, playing another land. And because I've also included Revise, by the way, it does give me access to a Brain Geyser. And that's, of course, a card that my opponent doesn't have. My opponent does have this, though, which is very efficient for card draw. I'm not countering it. This is really good. This could give him the game, you know, like a Jam Day Tome can win games. I've seen it happen. Oh, look at that. Tapping five. I'm going to play something out. Maybe Air Elemental would be quite nice. They can fly over that Earth Elemental. Yep, Air Elemental. That's perfect. Playing with four air elementals and only two water elementals, I think. And then three fire elemental and three earth elemental or four earth elemental, two fire elemental. I forgot. Anyway, a lot of elementals. Am I going to do something else? It looks like it. Tapping four. Control magic. Oh. Oh, that is painful control magic on the earth elemental oh that means he's in for a lot of pain well four damage now but next turn or can he counter this oh he cannot that means i can start attacking hitting him for four first but next turn i can attack him for 12 then he would drop to four he needs to find an answer like a mamoto would be actually be quite good but even better would be a control magic on my control magic. Sorcerer's Queen would be good, but more for the long run. He's gonna tap six. There's a mom OT Jin. Love it. I mean, it's bad for me, but I love seeing it. It's such a beautiful creature. Five, six flying for two blue and four. And I mean, six toughness, that's hard to beat. Now the question for me is, am I gonna attack here and, and accept that I'm gonna lose an elemental, but deal eight points of damage? Maybe it's worth it. That means he would drop to eight. I would have his life total. I also have one unsummon in my deck. So that would be pretty cool as well. Look at that. I'm just attacking with everything. I'm saying, you know what? You can stop one, but I can still deal eight points of damage. And maybe I've got even more elemental in hand. So he's going to block the air elemental. He's going to take eight. He's going to drop to eight. And look at that. I'm just going to recast another elemental. Oh, this is so problematic for my opponent. This is so problematic. He needs another Mahamoti. It's just, or, or, or a Sengi or something that flies. Another Mahamoti would be great for him. Or, of course, a counter spell on this air elemental. That would work as well. No, no counter magic, though. Passing the turn. So the glared card on his side is the earth elemental clone that I stole from him, just to clarify. Another Mahamoti. Oh, 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 this is so cool. He's going to stay alive. I mean, I can attack and deal four points of damage, but then I'm going to lose two creatures. But he's going to be on four. I'm not sure if that's a, it's a good strategy. Maybe if I have like a bolt in hand, I could consider doing that, you know. Oh, man. Okay, playing another. Okay, this is, wow, another element. That means that I can just wait a turn and then do an alpha strike next turn. That's probably my best line of play. So passing the turn here. Can he find, if he can clone it. I mean, he plays with, I think, four clones in this deck as well. So if he can just find a clone, tapping four, is he gonna, is he gonna, oh no, he's gonna draw a card. I thought he was gonna play a clone for a moment. Can he find a clone? That's what he needs right now. Four lands. I mean, a Mahamoti, he cannot play out. So even if he just drew into one, he can, oh, he's passing the turn. I think I'm gonna win. Look at that, putting everything sideways, going for that Alpha Strike. There we go, full elemental forces, killing the air elementals. So he's dominating the sky, but he's dead. That's it, dark ritual in hand and a Felwer stone. Not enough here for my opponent. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of felt that control magic kind of got me the game. Look at that, I even had another control magic in hand. Probably just drew into that, but wanted to win with this alpha strike. Wow, wow, wow. Well, thank you very much, uh, you for uh, playing with this beautiful deck. It's just really, really nice. And oh, look at that, he had all those power sinks in hand, but they were kind of useless. Because I had so much mana with the Soaring and the Mana Vaults. 
Anyway, again, you man, thank you for for this match. Uh, we played together a lot, and, and your decks are always interesting. And I just really enjoy seeing these reprint decks. I think it's really cool that you've limited yourself to fourth edition and chronicles. I, I think that's kind of cool as well to just only play with those two sets because that's even more budget friendly, right? Because you don't have access to the dual land. So that's that's kind of cool as well. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about these decks that are completely made up out of the uh, the sets revised fourth edition and chronicles we actually did a reprint masters tournament not too long ago i'll, I'll put a little info card that you can go in and see the matches played uh in that tournament for now thank you very much for watching another episode right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and uh before you go please take a moment to like share and comment and uh, all this is free and really helps the channel uh, move further. You know, YouTube just loves that stuff. So if you have a moment, please hit that like button, leave a comment, and uh, if you want to share it on your socials, I really, really appreciate it. And then there's also one more thing I'd like to talk to you about, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because yes, we have our own Patreon page. What does that mean? Well, you can become a patron of the show by sponsoring the channel financially, and that already starts with just $1 a month. All you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, where you can find out all the ins and outs it's really really simple and you're really really helping me to continue creating content for you now there are also some nice perks attached if you become a patron one of those is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video every video including this one yes including this one let's go to the end scroll Somebody can see.